Hey, Agent, what building are you going to be using for NBA 2K19? What animations are you going to be running? What jump shots are you going to be running? It's been like a million people asking me this, and I could tell between now and the launch of 2K19, it's going to be like 6 million more asking me this question. So let's address it now, and hopefully through the process, I can help you guys not make the worst build decisions when it comes to NBA 2K19. First of all, you should know that I take this job very seriously. For the last two NBA 2Ks, I've came up on top choosing the correct build. And then for the first like four months of the game, they've been patching me is what's been happening. I want my decision to be so good come NBA 2K19 that Mike Wang and his whole team is going to be up all night trying to figure out a way to patch what the f*** I'm up to on NBA 2K19. All right, first things first, yo. You can't already know what your build's going to be. I mean, unless you really don't care. If you're a casual player and it really doesn't matter to you what, what your build is, then by all means, choose your build right now. I mean, they could add more archetypes, we don't know. They could change up some archetypes drastically and we don't know. But if you don't really care and you're a casual guy, go ahead, do your thing. Choose choose your 5-7 post defender now, all right? And you're going to be that guy on the park that nobody wants to play with because you're going to see you and immediately tell by your build when they're scrolling through the list of players in the park that you're not one to be playing with. And not in a good way, not in like, oh, I'm scared of you way, but in like a, we're 99% chance going to lose this game with this idiot teammate. Now, if you do care about your build, I am now talking to you. How y'all asking me what build I'm going to choose before we get any information about the builds in the game. I do not know. You have to wait to get that information. How could, how could you have already decided? That's like if I was a college basketball player and I got an option to play D2, but there's like four months left and I know I could play and get all these D1 schools to recruit me for a scholarship. It's like you got to wait to see what your options are before you decide to go with the D2 school. It's kind of like that, but not really, but it's kind of a little bit like that if you just think about it a little bit. You have to think, you have to know the history of 2K and how they usually tend to make decisions time and time again. Now, we know ever since 2K uh, 17 and 18, they've been patching sharpshooters year by year making them worse. Even in the NBA 2K League, bro, they patch sharpshooter dribbling. And they don't have no glitch dribble moves and the sharpshooters don't have glitched attributes, glitch tendencies, nothing. And they just keep patching the sharpshooter build. So you gotta think to yourself, people like people probably thinking, agents most definitely gonna choose a sharpshooter uh-uh, I'm choosing the, the best possible build. I'm trying to dominate when the game launches. I'll tell you guys one thing. Week one, when the game launches, is prime time to make 2K history. Because that first week when the game launches, there is going to be an overpowered build. You have to find which one it is. If you remember, when 2K17 began, sharpshooters were making everything. I don't know which garbage ass gamers tested the game and came out with the conclusion that sharpshooter shooting was okay, but on the first week of NBA 2K17, sharpshooters were destroying folks left and right. And so I made a sharpshooter and I came out with these videos dropping all these points on the Pro-Am before the patch came out, that was 2K history. We can never go back there because it's all been patched. When NBA 2K18 came out, 2K wanted to be smarter, right? And so they did all the patching to start with so nobody came out with this insane, ridiculously overpowered build. Still, I believe sharpshooters are gonna be overpowered build. They were. Actually, that's wrong, they weren't. For the first three days, nobody was making shots because shooting was incredibly difficult, except sharpshooters, so sharpshooters had that advantage. And then Mike Wang succumbed to the pressure of everybody, and he made shooting easier, and then shooters were destroying it, and then he slowly had to start patching them. While everybody thought the play shooter was gonna be the greatest, what, I can shoot threes and I can speed boost, that's gonna be crazy. I was like, no, I'm looking at this strategically right now, okay? And I could tell sharpshooters gonna be the greatest. But after two years of patching, Patches. I'm thinking in the back of my mind, what are the odds 2K is going to come out with another year of 2K and sharpshooters just going to happen to be the most overpowered build that's going to be in need of patching? I don't see it happening. So you got to look into the details, right? When 2K18 launched, the Euro step was very cheesy. So I could have been a sharpshooter and went in the lane just saucing folks with a Euro step. They patched that now. They're going to be looking out for that. So now you can't even attack the hoop with a sharpshooter. They definitely aren't going to let you dribble with no sharpshooter. And now, like, depending on how hard they make shooting, sharpshooters might be valuable, but you really got to think about it. I'm looking at those slashers. I don't, 2K really makes life easy on slashers and shot creators. Slashers and shot creators might be the move that might be a good first move. But the thing is, is I will never know until we get more information. Last year, when we got information, remember when we went to that NBA 2K event? I was asking Mike Wang a whole lot of questions, trying to get some details and information so I could make the right decision. Mike Wang hasn't came out with any sort of park or pro-am related information yet, right? 
And so until that moment occurs, I can't sit down and help make a decision. Now, when I'm making my decision, bro, it's something serious. I'm in Discord calls, communicating with other individuals, going back and forth. I'm trying to get all information humanly possible, right? I'm trying to align myself with potential big men, potential guards that know how to drill, potential shooters, just in case I need a team, I don't know what build I'm gonna be using coming up on the next 2K. This is like a science to me, yo. I take all the necessary information, you know it's gonna drop the second I get it on the channel too, and I'm gonna make the right decision regardless. Every year I've made the right decision, and I don't want 2K19 to be the year where I just completely dash my first player that I make because it didn't end up handing out, then all that grinding I did the first week is gone, and it's like, ah, that's a waste of time, and then I'm gonna have to retire the player and everything. I'm not trying to go through that. Okay, now when it comes to jump shots, jump shots, aren't affected nearly as much year over year. When NBA 2K18 came out, I immediately took screenshots of my 2K17 jump shots and I just tried them all in NBA 2K18. And a lot of them felt different, but some of them felt the same and were dominant. So it was like a good starting point until I can find my own 2K18 jump shot. For example, base eight wasn't as popular in 17, but some changes to the game in 18, incredibly popular. Base nine was popular both in 17 and in 18. There's specific releases like McCullum's that like went through some bullshit in 17 and in 18 it was just some ass cheeks. The game is gonna feel different no matter what. We don't know what the latency and the delay is gonna be on NBA 2K19. Is it gonna be incredibly high? Server's gonna be good? Is it it's gonna be incredibly low? We don't know so we can't make a lot of those decisions yet. But what I'll tell you right now is I have a playlist of jump shots and if you take all of those jump shots that I classified as A1 to reaching the highest standard of jump shots and you try them in 2K19, you're gonna be straight until I figure out what the f is going on and I decide what the best jump shot in 2K19 is. Jump shots, I'm not really worried about. The build, I can guess and get wrong. So I'm gonna be really focused on the build. But the jump shot is always trial and error. I always have to try a new jump shot, it doesn't work trying. Like I'm trying hundreds of jump shots in the first week of the game just to find one that bangs. And then I'm gonna find some consistency. I know uh, this is a science to me, right? I'm going to the jump shot creator with the mindset and I'm creating a whole lot of jump shots and then I'm gonna test them out. And God forbid, 2K gives me like some sort of practice mode where I can variable latency and just test the jump shots out. Hey, give me like one day and I'll come out with the best jump shot like that. But as long as I have to test it out in Pro-Am or Park, it's gonna take a little longer than that. Don't, in fact, you guys don't even have to worry about jump. Let me worry about the jump shot for you guys. You know the second I get a jump shot, it's releasing. And this is to you, Mike Wang. Mike Wang, I know it. You're watching this video right now, you're thinking to yourself, how can I patch this jump shot as soon as do not patch my jump shot, my Wang. It, it is not an exploit. It is the way your game is built. Some jump shots hit better. And for the people that go out of their way to spend time to find those jump shots, you better leave them in the game. Is I spent time, I worked hard to get the jump shot. And I'm just sharing it with the people. That's what I do. It's for my channel. It's for the people. That being said, let's talk about dribble moves, right? Unfortunately, dribble moves change a lot year over year. We just seen Mike Wang come out with a tweet yesterday saying he plans on adding a fake in and out. Like, you know the fake behind the back in and out that Kyrie did one time? He said he's adding that move to the game. He's talked a lot about, we, you've heard, you've seen videos where like, speed boosting exists. Speed boosting doesn't exist. But nobody really knows because we haven't played on the playground. We know for a fact that the playground is going to be more arcadey this year than it was last year. They're going to have some more insane animations and crazy rhythm dribbles or whatever the case is. Now, I wish I can give you guys some advice on, on the dribble moves. I'm just gonna have to watch the dribble move videos, to be honest with you, because I don't really know when it comes to that. I don't memorize dribble moves the same way I memorize jump shots, right? You guys know me. I'm not a fantastic dribbler whatsoever, which is why it caught me off guard when I replied to Mike Wang's tweet saying this. Can you please add off the heezy? I want to be able to bounce the ball off people's heads. Ha <laughs> ha. This is coming from the best top, tippity top dribbler in the 2K community. You guys know I, 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 don't, I don't happen to be a tippity top dribbler. And then somebody replied saying, you might as well make 2K a circus show if he adds that. This is how y'all ruin 2K with ideas. And then everybody thought I was serious. I'm not serious, guys. I don't know a lot about, I'm not gonna pretend to know a lot about dribbling. I could do a generic ass speed boost behind the mag. But if you tell me, Agent, we're gonna throw you in a competitive environment versus a top 10 team, I'm gonna get my ass sauce, bro. And it's not that it's hard to learn 2K. It's just that I really don't even wanna play like that is the thing. It's when I get satisfaction from playing 2K, it's from hitting that green light from full court and everybody's like, how, how did that guy do it? And then I just tell him like, it's all in the fingers, man. It's what I do. They change dribbling a lot year over year and some people 
hate it and some people like it and sometimes they go realistic and sometimes they go arcade but you got to keep in mind if you're a dribbler you have to stay on top of things some of the animations are going to be the same so if you remember you like to use hesitation one because of the nice step back from 2k16 and 17 and then you hear rumors that they're going to reintroduce that hesitation one step back back into nba 2k19 you have to pay attention even as a sharpshooter that step back is lethal it was my favorite move do you remember when they had the post cheese in nba 2k17 before they patched that you could hold l2 move in this direction and then without no delay pivot back into this direction so quick you could dash any opponent i used to do that all the time until it got patched i was saucing youtubers one-on-one -on -one with the sharpshooter doing that and then it got patched you have to think what is 2k gonna make overpowered and then what is 2k not gonna patch as well because sometimes they see something overpowered and their number one priority is to patch it but other times they see it and they don't see it as an exploit so they leave it in the game so if you can find that sweet spot it's game over everybody's gonna be like yo i wish i made your build first then they're gonna have to make a second player and a third player right and then by then you already got the head start because you're like a 95 overall or something you upgraded your attributes like this and everybody's playing catch up hey let this be the last thing i say if you go into the prelude and you're thinking to yourself, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna decide once I get in here and test the game out. You're fooling yourself. We already know when you're in the prelude, your player plays like Superman until his 60 overall last makes it in the game and he starts playing like a bucket. Am I right? So the second you start making decisions based on gameplay in the prelude, you're messing up. Immediately, you're gonna make the wrong decision, right? You're basically hoping and guessing at that point that you make the right decision. You're not making calculated decisions. All right, but here's what will happen. They'll announce the park mode right they'll hype people up about it and then they'll start to talk about the build now I assume at that point some way somehow we'll start seeing screenshots of what the builds are gonna look like now last year we saw the same thing and everybody was doing their analysis to find out which build was gonna work for them and we have seen photos of all of the builds do you guys remember that I want you guys to wait for that moment to start really thinking about what you're gonna do until that moment occurs and you were wasting your time trying to think about what build you want to use I can make a playmaker next year or a sharp next year it could be a slasher a shot creator or a new archetype they introduce i do not know yet but here's what i'll tell you i'm definitely not making no decision until i get that information right so that that's it i don't want nobody else for the rest of history to ask me what building i'm using 2k19 because i don't know and honestly you shouldn't know if you actually plan on winning some games Jeez, yeah how could you make some decisions like that is a premature decision most definitely don't you want to go to a D1 school? Anyway, I'm going to leave it on that, man. Drop a like if you haven't already. I'm going to leave a playlist right here to all my jump shot videos. And I'm going to leave another playlist to all my drama alert videos. You get caught up on the news here. And you could go back and see all my greatest A1 jump shots right here. All right? I'm going to catch you guys in the next one. I'm out. Peace.